So today we're back in the fish room and we have some maintenance to do. As you can see here, my tanks are a big mess. There's algae all over the glass and they are due for a big water change and some algae scraping. So today I'm taking you through my entire process. I normally have a weekly routine that just contains the um, glass where I algae scrape it and that's it basically. But today we have to do algae scraping, gravel vacuuming and water doing water changes on the tanks as well as servicing the dosing hoses to make sure that it's all working fine. We have to clean these over here because they are messy. There's algae, there's all sorts of nasty stuff on there and it doesn't look good at all. So today that's what we're doing and I'm taking you along with me on this journey. This is also a great opportunity for you to do your tank maintenance with me while you watch this video. And while we're at it, let me show you these insanely ugly aquarium tops. It's just plexiglass and it's bending in all sorts of angles. It looks awful, it looks disgusting, and I really have to find a, a different solution for it. I like the net cover I have on here, but evaporation is crazy. Evaporation on these tanks, however, less evaporation because all the water stays inside the aquarium and it just falls down into the tank again. But it just looks awful. So I have to find someone that makes custom acrylic, I think, uh, aquarium tops for these three tanks. Let me know your suggestions in the comments and yeah, let's get started. So one of the first steps in my maintenance routine is taking off these awful aquarium tops. But for that, I will need something to keep the floor nice and clean because it's, these tops get really dirty with water and just dust from my room. And I just put it right here on the side take it off and it just it can leak on there I don't care and the final step in my maintenance routine is cleaning these in the shower but I won't show you guys that it's disgusting and there we go this one is actually too big for this spot over here so next up which tank should we start with the frag tank, the mixed reef tank, or the soft coral aquarium. I think I am going to start with this one. It's the easiest one. Then we'll move over to the soft coral tank and lastly the frag tank. It's a pain in the ass to really get a good cleaning done because of course we have the frag rag over there and I need to take it off because I want to keep the back of the aquarium clean as well. And I see some red cyano over there. And this one is just super messy and annoying to clean. Now to clean the glass, I like using the um, flipper, which I should have it somewhere in here. No, I do not. Let me find it. Should have prepared this. Where's the flipper? Okay, I found it, finally. Right here, a flipper. It is a magnetic cleaner, so I don't have to get my hands wet just yet. But we'll have to do that later when we do the gravel vacuum. Now I said I usually clean the glass on a weekly basis, but to be honest, I skipped last week's maintenance. So this is about two weeks worth of algae. So not too bad actually. And one thing that really that I noticed is that, of course, this tank is the oldest and it doesn't get as dirty as the other two tanks. So I guess it has something to do with the stability of the water and just how well established the system is. Using the flipper super duper easy, you just go back and forward until all the algae is gone. Now sometimes you'll notice that how it doesn't matter how often you go over the spot, some algae will still be left over there. So then you just take it, flip it and use the knife part of the flipper and it solves the problem right away so that's what I'm doing now it's it takes about I guess maybe 10 minutes for each aquarium to really get all the algae off I know that a lot of people only clean the front of the uh, aquarium and the sides but I really like to keep every side of the aquarium super duper clean because I think it just looks best 
like some people just really don't care if there's a ton of coralline algae the purple stuff or other algae or whatever growing on the back of the aquarium it, this is just my preference you don't really have to clean all of it so well it's just something aesthetic to keep in mind it doesn't really do the tank any harm i guess now as you can see the fish that i added last week are still doing really well in this aquarium you just saw the royal grandma it's still hiding underneath there and then we have the chromis the damsel fish they are still enjoying life as well now the other two balenis i added as well well speaking about them i was going to say i didn't see them anymore but i'm seeing one right now let me show you it is right in between the zoanthids right over there can you see it they're pretty cool fish i hope they become more active over time but we'll see they're just really fun fish, if you see them, of course. So right now it looks like I'm done with the front of the aquarium, but let me show you something. Because it may look super clean from this angle, but if you look from here, I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. Yeah, it does. Like right over there in the middle of the screen, you can see a darker spot. And that's where there's some algae left and also right over here where's my finger there near the sand it's still really dirty so we have to clean that as well now to clean close to the sand i don't like using the flipper because sand can get stuck in between the magnet and it can scratch your entire glass if you're not careful like me so for that i have a different tool that one should be here let's see yeah it is right here this is a scraper as well and I can just stick it in here and scrape off all the algae super easy now sand can still get stuck in between there of course but it's less risk and if you're careful you should be fine now unfortunately it looks like I already ran into a problem I thought I had enough salt water here at home but I don't so what I'll do is I'll just clean the glass of every one of these tanks and then we will go get some salt water from the fish store and when we when we get back home the water will probably be a little bit clearer already but then we don't have to wait and do the algae scraping on the other tanks anymore that will save us so much more time because it's already 5 p.m. and the store closes at 8 so if I only did this one then went to the store got back home and had to do the other two tanks we would probably be done at like 3 a.m. and I don't want to do that so now just enjoy some clips of me cleaning all these three tanks and then we'll go to the fish store So while we're at it, I just took off the wet side of my MP10 power head. And I'm just using a, an old toothbrush to get all the nasty stuff off of there. Now every now and then I will literally just take it apart, every piece of it, and I clean it downstairs at the sink. But it's not too bad right now because I recently added these to the aquarium. So for today, just the toothbrush. It's perfect that's it it's clean and we can put it back so of course the water is getting a little bit cloudy and the corals are starting to retract a little bit because we have been messing with the aquarium but they will all get fixed later on something else I really don't like is this nasty edge on the sand so what I usually do is just take my finger and just move it along the sides and they get rid of all of it so I finished algae scraping the aquariums they're all nice and cloudy right now but at least the glass and the edges of the sand beds are nice and clean so next up we'll eat some dinner head to the fish store get ourselves some salt water and then 
do the water change and gravel vacuum process. By the way, I've showed off my sign a few times now in the other videos and I noticed four people got one of these through my affiliate link. So if you are one of them, make sure to send me your sign as a picture of course or a video because I'd love to see what you came up with in terms of the name and the designs. And if you don't have one yet, make sure you click the link in the description and go to Aquatic Dreams slash Denny's Aquariums. Alrighty, I'm back from the fish store and it is time to do the water change. I have some salt water here. Normally I either mix it myself or if I thought I had some and I don't, I will just get it pre-mixed from my local fish store. Sometimes it's natural seawater, sometimes it's just synthetic seawater, mixed salt water um, from the local fish store. If I mix it myself, I use RODY water and the Fritz Aquatics RPM Pro Mix. So we need the big can of salt water. I already heated it up to the right temperature, which is 24 degrees Celsius for my aquariums. We have a small container for the waste. And then we need something to clean the gravel or sand, of course, which is this device right here. And this is going to be super easy. I'm just taking off my watch because it will get wet. And then we stick it in here. pump a few times and it's running and I just move through the entire tank and as you can see there is a ton of waste in there and now normally I would take out all the plate corals that I have over here and move them to some other place in the reef so I can really clean all the sand but I don't really want to do that anymore because it really disturbs all the corals if you do this right, the sand will stay inside the aquarium and you'll only take out the waste. The fine particles that are causing algae problems and other nasty stuff. Here, look at this. It's just really, really nasty. And to be honest, I haven't done this in a long time either. Like I said, I skipped last week's maintenance. But I think the last time I really cleaned out the sand like this was probably two or three months ago, I think. So it's really due for some maintenance now. And sometimes I'll just use my fingers to cut the flow for a bit, move to another section of the aquarium because I don't want to take out too much water. Let's clean out this area here. I had some cyanobacteria going on. Make sure we don't damage the plate corals. There are so many of them, it's insane. And they're starting to spread across the entire tank now, which is pretty cool. So as you can see, we barely took out any water. It's uh, a can of 10 liters. The aquarium holds about 150, 160 liters, 40 gallons. So it's just a really small water change just to make the sand nice and clean again and to take out most of the uh, detritus and waste. Now I should have done a before and after, but let me tell you, this sand is much cleaner now. Or you can actually see it here. This is a part I didn't clean and this is a part I did clean, but I don't want to move these clamps, so it's okay for now. You, you don't really see it because it's always in the shadows of the Acropora. The clams aren't in the shadow, of course, because they need a ton of light, but you get the idea. Just look at that. It is disgusting. It should be crystal clear, but it's not. To add fresh salt water to the aquarium, I'm using another can, putting it there, and then we put this one on top of there. 
it's not super stable so I have to keep it in place with one hand. We grab ourselves a hose, stick it in there. Be very quick, you don't want to taste the salt water. And we just add it to the aquarium like this. A long time ago when I just started off with saltwater aquariums, I would just take the container of water and dump it into the tank, but it just, it, it would splash everywhere and it makes a huge mess, so this is much easier. So I filled up the aquarium to the level it should be at, and I noticed I knocked off a small piece of this Montipora. So what I usually do with that is, I just throw it in the garbage, you know. I'm kidding. I just look for a spot in the reef, like right there for now, and it will just start growing there. You can see I have a lot growing here, more of the same species over there, of course here, and probably somewhere in the back over there as well. Now for this aquarium, the frag tank, we need a different approach. As you can see, there is a accrate uh, in the aquarium, so we can't use the gravel vacuum to clean the aquarium. So what I do is, I take this green hose, get the flow going, and then I use a turkey baster to just blow the debris out of there, not suck up any coral. There's some over here. And then I saw some cyano in the back here, so I'll just get rid of that really quick. It's probably because the flow is blocked by the, these massive corals over here. Because it's nowhere else in the aquarium. Let's see if I can change this up. Here, look at this. Super messy, a lot of sand. There's a ton of bubble algae on here, so it's time we take this aquarium down and rescape it into the SPS only tank I have planned. Now, because I already used the big container for the other aquarium, it's much lighter and easier to edit to this aquarium like this. I just keep my hand underneath there so it doesn't ruin all the corals. Now this water is the perfect temperature, it's 24 degrees Celsius. If it were to be too cold, I just add a heater, an extra heater or even one for my aquariums really quickly, into the uh, container to get it to the right temperature because you don't want to add any colder water to your live aquarium with live corals because that can really mess with some of these species, especially the SPS and some LPS corals. The soft corals usually do fine, but the other corals really get a big hit when they get temperature swings and that sort of stuff. So be careful with that. Stability is, is key. Alrighty, so I repeated the same steps for the soft coral aquarium and one of the final steps in my maintenance routine is right before I clean the glass, I have to get rid of this ugly layer on top of the water. It has a ton of biofilm, which is basically a buildup of bacteria. I explained this in my previous video. But there's also a lot of waste in there right now. Fine particles that usually your filter would take out, but my aquariums don't have any filtration on them. So what I use is I use a surface skimmer, which is this device here, to get rid of all those fine particles. It takes about five minutes for each aquarium. And then I just take it out because I want as little equipment on the aquariums as possible. So, I just stick it in here. Usually near a corner works best for me. And because the flow goes in a circle and it ends up here before it goes back to the power head. And I just plug it in. Let's see if I have a plug left. Yeah. Just take out one of the lights. So. There we go, it's blowing a lot of air bubbles, we don't need that. Let's see, there we go, we fixed it. So the aquariums are so much cleaner now. The water is still a little bit cloudy, but that will clear up in a few hours. Hello fishy, are you happy with your clean aquarium? 
almost clean aquarium. Look at this mess. We'll fix it for you. He seems a little bit hungry. Or she. It's a she. The bigger one is always the female. The smaller one is the male. I hope these lay eggs very soon. So let's see if we have some food somewhere. Probably not. Let's see. Yeah. The Denny's Aquarium's food mix. No, it's not my food mix. It's just a mix of all sorts of pellet food from different brands. I just mix it in there. So let's see. Let's use this spoon. Look, they're going nuts for it. And there we go. The tank is dirty again. No, just kidding. Guys, can you see that? Right over there. My hosing pump is leaking. What the heck? Oh. It has a leak. No. That's super weird. It's probably a big mess over here right now. Oh god. Yep. Look at that. Oh, that's nasty. I have to clean that tomorrow. Now this should be a pretty easy fix. Because it is right up here. I can just cut off a piece. There we go. Of course, it's leaking everywhere. Just put that on there again. So that should be fixed now. Hopefully. Ah. The Reef Kinetics Reefbot Lab hole is not staying in the water. There we go. Fixed. Awesome. So now we can finally move on to the final step of my maintenance routine which is cleaning the glass for that i use a washing cloth that i just put in a uh, small cup of rody water and i just start cleaning all the sides of the aquarium like this i almost fell there like last video there we go other side and because I'm using RODY water, it doesn't leave any nasty marks on the glass. There we go. Then I use this thing over here. What do you call this in English? I have no idea. And I just swipe it from left to right. And there's some water left here so I use a dry cloth and get rid of that as well other side and then I always clean the top of the glass as well because it looks nasty if there are fingerprints or water marks on there and that's it this aquarium is ready maintenance is done I think it took me about maybe maximum of 30 minutes for each aquarium so that's one and a half hours this time of course i had to go to the local fish store this time but usually i have my salt water ready so super simple it doesn't take you a ton of hours every day to maintain a reef tank it can be really simple so i cleaned the glass on all the aquariums and look at this they are looking incredible i'm so happy with the way the reefs are turning out the macroalgae in that tank is growing really fast and I need to add some more soft corals over there. Maybe something colorful, I don't know. In the 40 gallon I want some different colors as well, as you can see. Meh, the colors aren't too exciting. So I want to add something else. And then the frag tank is, well, you've heard it in the last video. We're turning it into an SPS only tank. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I took you along with me as I did maintenance on all of them. I hope you cleaned your aquariums as well. And let me know in the comments which one of these is your favorite and what you want to see next. Thanks for watching.